Hi, this is James McNally of National Instruments UK and I wanted to talk you through an example I produced as part of a demonstration of some advanced calling DLLs techniques. The problem I decided, tried to solve is to use libav as a audio file decoder to then play it through LabVIEW. Now why this is difficult is libav is an example of a DLL that has some very large complex structures as part of its interface and I wanted to use this to demonstrate a few techniques that we can use to deal with them. So here is the main application. To be honest there's nothing too challenging here. Uh, along the top we have the calls to the DLL encapsulated in sub-VIs and on the bottom here I'm just using the sound APIs to play the decoded frames. If we start at the very beginning in open file we can see the, the initial calls. Uh, so I started from a C example to understand what needs to be done. Uh, to be honest, the first call is very straightforward. It's a void in, void out function. So I'm not going to talk about that. The first one I want to talk about is this AV format open input. This requires um, a file name as an input, so that's pretty straightforward as a C string. A couple of pointers that we don't actually need to use, so we can set those to null. But most importantly, this is going to return us a pointer to a large structure called the AV context. Looking at the prototype I've got down here, it actually wants a pointer to a pointer. And the reason for that is that it's going to take the pointer that we passed to it, and it's going to replace that pointer with a valid memory address for the structure once it's allocated it. So to do this, I've got an input defined as a pointer, and actually within here, it's a pointer to that as well. So when I run this function, I can just pass in a zero and then DLL is going to replace that with a valid memory address for that AV context. There's then a couple of different ways we can work with it in LabVIEW. The easiest is we continue to work with it as a pointer. So this, the value on this wire is going to be the memory address of that structure. And when I need to use it in another function, like this find streams function, uh, I can pass it as a pointer by value and it will successfully access that. The really hard bit is when you want to start to get the data inside of it. The first way to do that involves creating these large clusters, these gigantic clusters is the phrase that someone described to me. So here I have a type def and this is designed to emulate the contents of the structure in C. This is very slow, very painful, but it can work. There's a couple of particular points to show with this. First of all is some structures will then contain pointers to other structures, and LabVIEW doesn't deal with this. If you try and use a cluster with an array in it, LabVIEW replaces it with a handle. And that's why we're having to use this more complex approach to deal with this cluster. What I've done in this type def is anywhere where there's a pointer, you can see I've put PTR on the end, I've just replaced that with uh, an integer value. So when we look at this, we're not going to see the raw data behind that pointer, we're just going to see the pointer to the memory address, which we can then use to access that data later. The other thing, the other challenge was there's this file name element. In C, this is defined as a 1024 element um, character array and it will actually be in line with the cluster. So what I've had to do is define this as a 1024 element cluster, uh, which you can see at the bottom here. Don't get me wrong, I wrote a scripting VI to generate that. Um, this is the only way because if I put an array or a string in there, it will get replaced with a handle. So I had to create an equivalent data type of the same size as that string. So to actually read that data, what I've done is used a function called moveBlock. So in actual fact, if I open this up, this is by calling LabVIEW directly. Uh, this allows you to access certain memory manager functions, and one of them is called moveBlock. So you give it a pointer to a memory address, and then a destination, also a pointer, and LabVIEW will copy what is at that address into that new destination up to the size that you specify. 
So what I do is I say to LabVIEW, here's my memory address, which we, we got from the other function. My destination is going to be a cluster, so we can use clusters with DLLs. And by default, LabVIEW will convert this to a pointer. The size is the harder bit. Um, the, the easiest way i found to get this in LabVIEW is actually to flatten a cluster constant to a string and then get the string length and that will give us the size of that access. So that gives us a copy of the contents of this directly into LabVIEW. And if I run this quickly, we can see this is our pointer, our address, and then this is the populated uh, cluster. Now to help with this, there is actually an X node hidden in the palettes. Um, I found that didn't work with this particular cluster type. I'm not sure exactly why, but it seemed to corrupt the memory. So the next thing, we then have to load a codec for this to work with, and this is where things actually got even more difficult. The first thing is within that context cluster, there's something called a stream and there's a pointer to that stream. So what I do is from that context cluster, I pull out that pointer. It's actually an array of pointers, so I decide which one I want and offset that pointer by that amount. And then the size is going to be four bytes because in actual fact, it's an array a stream pointers. Once we have that pointer, then again we can use the move um, move block function of LabVIEW to access the data in that function. Now in this case, this is again a huge cluster, this stream cluster. So what I've done is I've been lazy. I've only produced the first few elements until I got to the element that I needed to, in this case the codec pointer, to save me producing the whole cluster in LabVIEW if I don't need to access everything. Once we have that stream within there, there's a pointer. And this again is a pointer to a large structure. At this point, I was getting pretty lazy, so I tried a slightly different trick. I knew I only needed one element out of this. So what I did was I took that pointer and I offset it by enough to get to that element inside the memory. Now this is really very bad in a lot of ways. It means that if I change operating systems or I change whether in 32-bit or 64-bit, this code will break. But for what I was doing here, that works well. Uh, then there's a couple of functions we have to call. Again, this AV codec open requires a number of structures which I've just kept as pointers within LabVIEW. Um, I do some error handling on the end, so this returns an error code if there's a problem, which I can then offset um, to put it into a custom range. So if I wanted to put it in the 8000 range, I could do that. Once the codex loaded, we also have to allocate a frame. Um, again, this is a structure with a pointer, so there's just a function for doing that inside the DLL. So then read each frame out. We have to, first of all, pass to a read frame function a pointer to a data packet. In this case, it assumes you're going to allocate that first. So what I've done is use ds uh, create pointer inside the lab view to create a pointer to a data size of 72. Again, that size may vary by platforms. Um, a better approach would actually be to create this full packet cluster and pass that in directly here because clusters are always passed as pointers. Uh, but again, these are big structures and so I wanted to try and create as few as possible. Um, then we have a, a call that actually does the decoding and this returns us a pointer to a frame. Within this frame, it's very similar to uh, the other elements we've seen. So this has a number of data pointers and a number of properties. So I use move block to pull out the frame. Data pointers, then I use move block again to pull out the raw data at that location. Um, a nice feature of, of this is it supports the different data types. So in this case, they actually have just a binary block, so we pull that out as a U8 array. You can use this as well when you're trying to debug your structures and understand why they're not fitting in your application. 
Then here it needs casting to singles, so I have actually flattened it and unflattened it to do that. The reason being is I can use this to change the uh, endianness of the data, uh, which was a problem in this case. And out of there, we get our raw channel data, which results in a working MP3.